Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge and today we've got a folding cleaver which with a detent lock. I'm calling it a detent lock. It's a new name I'm coming up with because it's not really a slip joint. It's not really a um, friction lock. It's I'm calling it a detent lock and I'll show you the details of that later on. If you watch most of my videos, you've heard that term a few times before. This is a knife by Fura Gear. They're claiming that it's D2 steel, and maybe it is. In my testing with this one and my uh, sharpening and stuff, there's a good chance this might be D2 steel. Uh, whatever steel it is, it's actually a pretty good steel, especially for a budget knife. And it's 35% off right now in the middle of June 2018. Uh, so if you want to get one of these, I'm going to have links down below in the description. There's also a big sale going on at GearBest. So they've got uh, all kinds of things on great prices. And I've got a coupon code so that anything that's their regular price will be 10% off. I'll have that information down below as well. But while we get there, take a look at this cleaver. It's just under 8 inches. Not a huge cleaver, but uh, we've got a coated blade, a little bit of a forward choil right there. Most people can fit a finger in there. Some people with really large hands are just going to have to use that as a sharpening choil and keep their hand back here. Uh, we've got a pocket clip, we've got a lanyard hole, and we've got G10 for grip. It's an interesting knife at a very good price right now. So if you're interested in this, stick around for the full review coming at you right now. <laughs> I am very happy with this knife. Uh, one thing I do wish, and I keep saying it, is I wish Fura would start putting model numbers, names, something on their knives so that it's much easier to differentiate which knife we're talking about uh, so that you can look it up in the stores instead of you know only finding somebody's link and following it. But that being said, following my links will work. They have started putting their name on their knives finally, and it says Fura Gear, and that's a good thing. And the coating that we have on here is a fairly thick coating. It's quite good. I don't see any defects on it yet. A little bit here on the spine. Uh, that's where I clamped it when I did sharpen it once because I needed to sharpen it to see how the steel felt underneath my hand, uh, underneath the stone to see if it really felt like it was D2. And you know, it might be, I can't say for sure one way or the other. I will open it up. Actually, I'll show you pictures of it now, of it open with the uh, ball bearings, and I want to explain that detent lock. On this knife, you can sort of see it on that inner side, this side right here, if you can see that little bit of a line right there on the liner, you can just sort of barely see it there. When I turn it like this, depending on how the light goes, you can see that there's something going on inside the liner on that side. There is a bit of a spring arm there with a detent ball putting pressure onto a little hole on the blade there, and that's what keeps the blade in place. That's when you hear this. That's the detent ball clicking in place. And uh, they've got the same thing using the same detent ball for when you close it. We're used to seeing that when knives are being closed. It's just that same kind of system to keep the knife open. So it's really not a locking knife. It doesn't lock in place, but that detent holds it. I really wish they would put that on both sides and then it would hold it with more um, pressure. Like the way it is now, you don't have to tap it very hard and it will start to close on you. But with this flipper tab being a forward flipper, so the knife's like this, it's up in front instead of up on top, it sort of acts a little bit like a rust lock where if your hand's over it, that's going to stop, you know, your hand over here on it is going to help stop it or slow it down from closing on you. Also, this finger choil, if you're using it up here, that really stops it from closing over on your hand. 
And if you're not using that choil, it still helps you, whereas it'll slip over and it'll do that. And it'll still probably cut into your finger, but it won't slice all the way across all of your fingers. So we've got these thumb studs here, so you can use it, the thumb studs to flip it open if you want to, although it's not designed to be thumb studs. They're designed more to behave like stop pins, but I found that it works quite well to use it as a flipper that way. So right or left hand. Uh, so that's good. So you can see how it's got these uh, in the frame here, these little cutouts. That's for the extended mode. And then you've got these little cutouts here for when it closes. So pocket clip right here. That's a very typical distance apart. So you might find other pocket clips that you can put in here, except for the fact that it's on that angle like that. So if your pocket clip, if you wanted to replace it, chances are quite high that it's going to come off on an angle. So you'd need a short one. This pocket clip here leaves about um, seven eighths of an inch, a little over two centimeters uh, sticking out of your pocket. Let's demonstrate that. So my Vibratite pen. I really like that brand. <laughs> I've got a video about some Vibratite products. So in your pocket like this, you have such a big um, cleaver that you can't have it all the way back in the corner. You got to move forward a little bit uh, because the knife needs the room to sit in there. So there it is sitting in the pocket. Like I said, it's just under an inch, about seven eighths, about 2.2 centimeters sitting there. A little more than I'd like, but makes it really easy to grab and pull out if you want to. Uh, talking about this end of the handle, the G10 is cut out around the lanyard holes. That means when you put your uh, paracord through there and you tie it up, it's not going to bulge way out because it's going to sit next to the liners. So that's a good thing. I don't use lanyards. Uh, at least 95% of the time I don't use lanyards. The G10 on here is obviously black. It's got your typical uh, uh, pattern on there, that texture. And it's quite grippy feels good in the hand. Um, it uh, stays grippy if the handle gets wet. So that's a good thing. Um, the pocket clip, I know I'm going back and forth on things very quickly. <laughs> the pocket clip, you know, it comes down and up and then it's bent over at the tip just so slightly. Very, very good feature. I wish everybody would do that. And that keeps it from getting hot in your hand because it's slightly bent over instead of just an edge sticking up. Very good thing. Uh, everything else is sort of just the styling. The styling cues are pretty cool on this. You've got this sort of uh, bone shape where it's thicker or wider on both ends and then narrower in the middle. Uh, quite comfortable in the hand. Uh, it would be more comfortable if it came out uh, extended on the back, but you know this isn't bad either. And especially if you sneak up and use the forward choil, then it's quite good there. There's no jimping anywhere, but the spine of the blade is rounded, so it's nice and soft on your thumbs. It's a fairly thick blade, so that helps you get a good sure handle on the knife as well when you're doing your cutting. So we've got ball bearings, like I said before, and I showed you, and that helps give a nice smooth action to it. There's no blade play side to side, up, up and down there's blade play because it doesn't lock, but side to side, no problems. And the uh, open pillar construction looks great. We've got those hourglass shaped uh, pillars for the open pillar construction and those look very good. That's a good thing. Everything's Torx. Very, very nice that way. Let's go through all the measurements. Cutting edge 7.3 centimeters, 2.87 inches. Uh, blade length 8.3 centimeters, 3.27 inches. So if it didn't have this choil, it would be an under three inch knife, but unfortunately it's over three inches. The blade thickness is 3.7 millimeters. That's 0.1455 inches. The blade depth is biggest up here at the front. That's 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it was right around half a millimeter, but since I sharpened it, it's a little over half a millimeter, um, 0 uh, 0.55 millimeters. Um, oh, I don't have the imperial measurement. It's on the screen right here. 
the uh, handle length, and not counting this flipper tab sticking right here, but just the handle length itself is 11.7 centimeters, 4.61 inches. And then the grip area is, you know, between, let's do it this way, between my thumbnails is the grip area, 9.8 centimeters, 3.86 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.4 centimeters, 0.55 of an inch. And the handle depth is biggest right back here. And that is 2.8 centimeters, 1.1 inches. Again, we had that on the blade depth. So that distance here and this distance here are the same. And that's kind of cool. The total length with the knife open is 19.7 centimeters, 7.75 inches. It weighs 145 grams, 5.1 ounces, and that's because they didn't do any skeletonizing on this liner. The liner's got a you know a decent amount of thickness to it, and um, they should have skeletonized it or at least put that other detent arm on this side. It would have been a little bit more money to get that all done, but I don't think it would have broke the bank at all. The price of this thing, it's 35% off right now at GearBest, and they don't say how long that discount will be up applying to this knife, so you might want to check it out soon. Any regular prices of stuff at GearBest during this sale, and it's on now, if you use the coupon code GBMIDYEAR2018, you'll get 10% off. Uh, the GB in uppercase, I'll write it again down below in the description area. I'll also give you the links to buy this as well. If you use my links, I get a tiny bit of a commission. I'll give you a link to use a browser for this. I'll also give you a link for using the uh, GearBest app because the GearBest app is now traceable in terms of uh, it'll track if you use my links or not. So if you've got a mobile phone or a, a pad, uh, you know, a notepad or something, and it's using Android or iOS, you can get the GearBest app and you can use my app links and I will still get credit if you buy it. The credit that I get from the sales of items, either, you know, GearBest, Amazon, Fast Tech, what have you, that really helps keep this channel going. So thank you very much for using my links. It helps me an awful lot. Uh, the price is $16.88 US, $22.19 Canadian, $14.45 Euros, 12.76 pounds sterling. That's with the 35% off included. And there's a small shipping fee as well. Um, I'm not sure if this is a copy of some other knife. I looked through a bunch of cleaver images and I couldn't find that it's a copy, but being Fura, it's probably a copy of something. So if you know which knife this is a copy of, uh, please let me know down in the description, in the comment section. Uh, better yet, send me an email at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. That's even better. And tell me the Fura cleaver is a copy of, and then say the name of the knife or give me a link is even better. So what are the big pros and cons for this thing? I don't really think the ball bearings are that big of a pro because I think it could be just as smooth using good washers, but it's certainly not a con. So the ball bearings work just fine. It's easy to open. It's easy to sharpen and maintain. Um, I like the rounded spine. I wish this choil here would be slightly bigger uh, for my fingers and for people with bigger hands, but not really necessary. Um, good execution, good grip. The G10 is very nice. The lanyard hole's in a good spot and well uh, well made. Uh, good hourglass shape, pillars, nice pocket clip design, just not quite deep enough. So that's the cons. I wish the pocket clip was deeper. I wish the detent uh, lock would be on both sides. And um, those are the basically the extent of the cons. Uh, I do wish they'd also make a locking version of this knife. Uh, a liner lock version would be a really good thing. Uh, but uh, there's some countries where you can only have slip joint or non-locking knives, and this will work in those countries. And uh, sometimes people just need that. And uh, even though we can have locking knives in Canada, I still often carry knives that don't lock. Uh, just because I grew up with not with knives that don't lock, and I've gotten used to how to use them safely. I've never ever hurt myself with a knife closing on me unexpectedly. It just has never happened. And uh, I'm turning gray and I'm a grandfather, so that tells you a little bit about a knife enthusiast who's used knives for many years and 
most of those years, I've had non-locking knives in my pocket. So there you go. That's the video. It might not be D2 steel, but if it isn't, it's still a good steel. Uh, let me demonstrate a little bit of cutting, and then we'll wrap up this video. And uh, it goes straight into the paper on the end here. Not always. I have just sharpened it. I didn't strop it. Stropping it would help it an awful lot, too. Um, let's see what else it's going to cut just fine. So you can use it as a knife just to slice through things if you want to. And it does a good job with that. Um, of course, if you're using it sort of in a, in a kitchen kind of mode when you're camping or something, you know, you can do that. It works quite well. Um, and certainly if you're just holding stuff in your hand, you can cut through it. No problem at all. Thanks again. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.